So I'm making my final push to finish all this block work. I've got the back wall done. All I like is to finish this front wall and lay one more course on the long wall and I'll be finished. I've enjoyed the block work, but the excitement is over, really. And I'm making you know, an effort to get this finished so I can move on to different parts of the project, like you know, framing up the wood section of the wall. So one of the large pluses of finishing this front wall up is that will allow me to take down the tarp in front of the shop that I've put up and taken down what feels like a million times. It was crucial to keep the weather out. Once this front wall is up, I won't need it anymore. And it'll feel good to pull that thing down. And if you're wondering about me grinding that block there to make it fit just a little better, that's not cheating. You know, it just makes all your joints look good and even. It doesn't hurt anything at all. Back over with you. So one thing that I don't regret at all on this project is laying these blocks myself. And it's been a big job. As probably you can imagine, there's quite a few blocks in this uh, in this building. But I've learned a lot. I've got a new skill now that I can at least say that I'm somewhat proficient at. Not fast, but I can lay block. And, uh, you know, a professional block layer sure makes it look effortless, but I assure you that it's not. There's so much, so much to the details. Since the beginning of this project, me and wasps, well, at least since it's been warm anyway, have not had a very good working relationship they're after me, it seems. Not today. Everything's a wasp right now. Well, I got that down without breaking a leg or getting stung. So I'd call that a victory. I definitely won't miss messing with these things, although. Tell you, I wouldn't have been able to to do the project near as fast without them. It rained so much. I mean, they were they were crucial in keeping this workplace dry, uh, so I could work on it. Otherwise, if I waited till the ground dried out to do everything, I'd have never got anything done. some age on it and I'll pressure wash these dirty blocks that I didn't get to clean. Yeah. 
nobody that's not looking for it probably wouldn't even see it. I mean, you can see the stuff that's been in for a week or two, and you know, it looks good. So you're not going to pull that out of there. This is, I'll show you, I'll get you back and show you how I, uh, how I plan on anchoring. This is the 4 before that runs across the doorway. This is the doorway opening, obviously. What I've done is shoved a big piece of number 4 uh, rebar all down into the cell, which hadn't been filled completely yet. Uh, it's, rebar probably runs about 3 blocks down, 2 blocks down, 3 blocks down at least. But that doesn't, I mean, that doesn't matter. Plenty of uh, engagement. But anyway, put it down in the block, run it up through uh, this big oak header beam and through the seal plate, and then filled it full of concrete, and then I'm going to weld on a nut and washer up here. I could have used a piece of half 13 threaded rod, but this is probably better. I mean, I don't plan on disassembling this thing anyway once it's together. Uh, the only thing that this causes is me having to cut a slot in the block that sets under this header but I'll fill it with concrete as well, and uh, it won't make a bit of difference. on a critter of some sort. This will be hopefully my last trip for sand. I can't finish up this long wall until the, all the cells are filled with concrete and I can't mix concrete till I have sand. This is my third trip and uh, it would be nice to do it in one. But this whole truck doesn't haul very much in the bed. So three trips it is and uh, this will allow me to finish up the work that I need to do in order to do more work.
favorite place. We're gonna get some sand, some more river sand. So this trip, I got 2,220 pounds of river sand, a little less than what I got last time, 500 pounds less. But you know, they don't ask you how much you want by weight. Basically it's hand signals saying crush my truck just a little more or you know, that's enough. And uh, this should be enough to finish what I need to do, I hope. Um, kind of deja vu, this is my third trip, but it's so worth it to go get this stuff because just the delivery fee would be probably four times or five times just uh, you know the amount of what I paid to get this myself so definitely the way to go I'm watching you Etsy creeks just about dried up Etsy's found a a puddle to cool off in. So instead of concrete to fill this top block that I had to cut, I just used mortar. Used the grout bag to pump it in there. It worked really well. I tried a little bit of concrete, but it's just so tough to get in there. You know, I wasn't sure that I could fill that void uh, well uh, otherwise. So just pumped it in there with a bag and it worked great. And this may look like the last row of blocks, last course, but there's actually one that goes on top of this that I have to put in. And then this front wall will be done. Greatest cut. I don't guess it matters really right now. Um, I have to be able to access this joint here. And then it's all one piece, so you know, can't just take it off. I guess it could. Not good. So the front of the shop is now done. And, um, well, close enough to done. The blocks are up. Let's say that. Um, now I just got to lay a row, at least one row, probably two rows, on the long wall, which that should go quick, but straightforward.
So here's a little trick that I, somebody had mentioned uh, when I first started laying these blocks, is just to lay your blocks out and then make a mark on on where the joints are, right? None of these are mortared, this top row. They're just set out. I know they'll fit because they're in there right now. And if I keep this joint spacing, when I get to the end, it'll work out. So just lay them out by eye, make sure all the joints are relatively even, and then every few blocks, just make a mark. You know, I'm gonna lay going this way, so I'll just make a mark here, and probably here. And as I lay, when I get to this point, if I'm ahead of it with this block or behind it, I know what I need to do to my joints uh, in front of this to make up for that error. That way when I get to the end, it'll work because I have a reference mark and I've compensated you know, some the whole time, either making the joints larger or smaller. It works. It's not necessary if you're decent at it, but you know, in the beginning it helps. So I finished up what may or may not be my last row of blocks on this entire building or on this wall. Now I may have to lay one more course on this. I'm not exactly for sure, but we'll find out. But I want to share with you the lumber that I'm going to potentially use. That's my thoughts at this moment to cap this with, right? I've got to put some concrete anchors in here or wet set some anchors and then attach wood to it. That way I can nail my framed wall up to it. So I want to share with you the lumber. It's pretty neat. I got it from an old farmhouse years ago. Same farmhouse that I got the wood flooring that's in my house uh, out of. Me and my dad went to this place. They were going to tear it down and, uh, you know, scavenge some lumber out of it because otherwise it was just going to get dozed down. So we saved some stuff. Pretty neat. It's full of square nails right now. I got a stack of it. So let me share that with you. So check out this nice piece of oak. Two inches thick by eight inches wide. I've got a few over here like that along with some poplar. And all of this come from the same old farmhouse. Now if I was guessing, I would say that the house that this come out of, 100 to 125 years old. That's just a guess. Sawmilled probably on the property that the house is on from timber that was growing on the place. This come out of a really elaborate house for the time period that it was built in. Most people would not have been able to afford a home like uh, this was. You know, I'd just hate to see this get dozed into a pile and burned. Right now it's full of square nails. So let's pull those out, maybe give this old piece of oak a second life. A flat tire. So square nails were in use for quite a long time. This thing has a lot of them in it. But it also has some, some uh, modern round nails as well. Fast forward about 30 or 40 seconds if you don't want to hear a little bit of a gruesome story. As a young kid, probably 10 years old, I was removing some nails. I was getting, being paid by my brother, about two cents a piece, which I thought was a good deal at the time. Some lumber that he had got given to him that was full of nails. Anyway, the wood was wet, and I was walking around on it with a hammer trying to find some nails to remove, and I slipped and fell. And I went to catch myself. I fell on the wood, and there was a 16 pity nail just like that, sticking up every bit that far. Went right through my hand right between my pointer finger and my middle finger, in between the two knuckles there, and I've still got the scar. I'll show you. <laughs> anyway, and I'm stuck to this board. I'm trying to pull my hand off, and I can't. Well, my brother walks over. He's white-faced. He's squeamish. And he takes his fingers, and he works up under my hand, and he pulls it off the nail. Ever since then, I've been pretty cautious when it comes to leaving uh, nails and stuff uh, sticking up, because... 
uh, you know, <laughs> obviously suffered the consequences. So remove them or at least knock them over. Let me show you the scar. See a little scar right there? It's faded. It's been a long time ago. That's where a nail come right through my hand. So I gotta square up this end. Cut at an angle. I'll come back. The other end's pretty square. So this board is 13 foot at the moment, 13 foot 6, uh, six 13, 6 and a half. I'm going to cut it to 13, 5, and uh, just to square this end up. That's a nice, uh, nice board there. Where's my pencil? Hear them coyotes? Peanuts on the roof as well. Come on, girl. Come on. Hey, girl, what are you doing? Come on. Come on. You can go in your hole. It's okay. It's just it's in there. Come on. They're pretty close. So because some of these oak boards were used as floor joists, uh, some of most of them are over eight inches wide as well, which allowed me to cut the bow out of them. So I just snapped the chalk line on both sides obviously to the dimensions that I wanted as far as the sports width and then just ran the skill saw down them and now I have two fairly straight uh, parallel sides and I can use these old boards I'm definitely glad that I'm getting a chance to use this lumber. I mean, it's set out here for years, at least four, four or five years anyway. And I didn't have a particular use for it, but I think it's really perfect, in my opinion, for uh, this situation. It's the same lumber, same type of lumber, basically. Same oak, two-inch actual uh, that's running around the seal plate on this thing. So it'll match, for one. And it's just awesome. Good stuff. So glad to get to use this.
So here what I'm doing is just laying the board out on top of the studs for the anchors that are coming out of the concrete wall. And then just taking a hammer and going over the top of them. So I'll make a mark on the board as to where those studs come up. Then I'll just take the board off, mark those spots, and, and drill the holes. Pretty simple, really. So all the boards that I'm going to be using, except for one, should have nail holes like you see in the little front face there, or the side, all along the whole length of this building. That doesn't bother me at all. In my opinion, kind of gives it an industrial look, and uh, it won't hurt a thing, really. You just use lumber, but I think it would be a shame not to use this stuff and for it to sit outside and rot away. And this stuff should last forever in this building. your arm if you're not careful. You need to get in a better position. So that's a heck of a drill bit made by Irwin. Supposedly they're fairly new, at least that's what the packaging says anyway. And it's made primarily for decking and stuff, so you can drill and countersink at the same time, which made things nice because uh, my 2 by 6 wall is going to sit on top of this. So Walnut the Squirrel overheard me talking to Elizabeth about wanting a wireless microphone for the channel, and he decided on his own to make that a reality. Well, it feels good to have a front wall and a back wall complete. And this front wall is actually supporting its own, own weight now, at least at the header. So this board is the only one I've got done at the moment. These are going to be capped as well, these ends. So this lumber will run all the way around here. And should give me a good platform, I think, to start framing from. So looking good. Still a long way to go. It's been a busy week, but they all are. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, subscribers, you know, anybody who supported me on this project. It's definitely appreciated. Send me an email if you need anything. And that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.